Hello and welcome to another edition of Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so. If you like this video, please push like and share it with your family, friends, neighbors, enemies, etc. Accepting responsibility for your own actions. It's a fundamental part of rehabilitation. Um, from 2007, October 2007 until January 2011, I was housed at Butner FCI 1. Among other programs in this prison, Butner FCI 1 has um, a residential alcohol and, alcohol and drug treatment program, also known as RDAP. In RDAP, inmates who are in this program live in a unit together. Actually, there's two units. Live in the units together. And for nine months, if they pass the program like they're supposed to, they, they go through the whole program. Um, I will say that I've been in other prisons that have the RDAP program and nothing compares to Butner FCI 1 as far as taking it seriously. I have been in prisons when they're just everybody's just going through the motions, staff and inmates alike. Um, in that same prison, we've had psychologist after psychologist uh, have affairs with inmates or bring in contraband. But in Butner FCI 1, I will admit, while I was there, um, very intense treatment program. I met a guy by the name of Jeffrey Welker, who was from Nebraska. Um, Jeff and I became good friends, got along real well. We spent our mornings together. Uh, I... I was the trash orderly on the yard, which meant that I had to go literally pick trash bags up out of the trash can and put new trash bags in. It took me all of five seconds. Jeff, Jeff was, um, I think, a, I, I forgot. He was some kind of rec orderly, but he had to stay out there two hours every morning. And uh, that was his time away from RDAP also. Jeff was in the RDAP program. Jeff was... Paying attention in class for sure. Um, I, I want. I was gonna say just going through the motions because he got out and went right back in, but that's not fair to say. He was learning from it. Everybody who goes through RDAP, uh, whether they know it or not, really does learn something. Uh, but Jeff Walker, he he was taking it seriously, if nothing else, to get through the nine months so he can go home early. And that's just being honest. Anyway. As part of RDAP, inmates are required to write a victim empathy assignment. They have a victim empathy assignment. Um, so the theory is everybody who's in RDAP, the treatment program, everybody has a victim. Um, everybody in there is supposed to be an addict or, or supposed to have had uh, chemical dependency issues, whatever you want to say. And if you have, you have caused uh, damage to others. So they want you to pick a person that sticks out in your mind that's a victim and that you can think that you victimized and um, write an apology letter to them. Well, I got an apology letter here from Jeff Welker uh, to a guy that he tortured, literally. And I have photos. Um, the reason I have this letter is because in 2008, I started the website Convict Inc. And on the website Convict Inc., the intent was it was going to be a prison pen pal based website where inmates could blog, post their artwork, post stories, whatever. Um, it fell through. Uh, it was up for a while. I was the only one on it. There was a couple of us, I think. But um, for whatever reason, it fell through. But during that time, I collected a lot of material for different inmates. Victim empathy letters like this, um, poems, uh, you name it. And I've got a lot of them. I just recently found them. As a matter of fact, I was sending, there people were sending them to my sister, and my sister kept all of them in an envelope. So I'm going to read a letter from Jeff Welker to his victim, Jonathan Powder O'Neill. Now, I thought about this, uh, about putting the names in this letter, you know, about, about actually saying them. But I, uh, the truth is that Jeff wanted this letter out there back in the day, and uh, he wanted the guy's full name in it. And like I said, he gave me photos. I have not talked to Jeff in some years, 
uh, I lost contact with him. I, I think he's out or just might have went back in. But um, I'm going to go ahead and read this because um, it's something that people will want to hear. Um, bear with me, please. This is a little bit long. Uh, if you guys get bored of people reading, you might want to stick around for this just to hear this just in case. Okay, so here's what he wrote. My name is Jeff Welker, and I'm currently enrolled in the Residential Abuse Treatment Program at FCI Butner. As part of the program, we are required to write a victim empathy assignment. I chose to write mine on Jonathan Powder O'Neill. Powder was the guy's nickname. I met Jonathan in the uh, Sarpy County Jail when he was 19 or 20 years old. He was alone and didn't have any contact with his family. And when we got out, I basically took him in and used him for my own twisted entertainment. From stealing out of stores to robbery, I made Powder do whatever I wanted, or I tortured him in front of my friends. And many times, I just tortured him for fun. I have not spoken to Jonathan O'Neill in seven years. I deeply regret what I did to him. I'd also like to take this time to acknowledge to Jonathan's family, his employers, the community he lives in, and any medical specialists or support groups that may be helping him heal and get beyond the victimization that I caused him. Here's the letter. Jonathan, I'm writing to you to take full responsibility for my victimization and the life-threatening actions that I caused you, that caused you extreme trauma and resentment that still affects you to this very day. All you ever wanted was a friend, Jonathan, some people to hang out and get high with, but instead, we all tortured you for our own amusement. I remember the night that you and Bill came to my house expecting to drink beer and smoke meth with us. And from the moment you walked in, we all saw that you were not comfortable. I think it was the fear in your eyes that made us all act like wild animals. And although I can't remember who threw the first punch that crashed into your temple, I do remember that you screamed out in agony, agony as all of us stomped you repeatedly. I can still hear you screaming, apologizing, begging us to stop. Oh, I'm sorry. I can still hear you screaming, apologizing to us as though you had done something wrong, begging us to stop. I then remember how relieved you were when I told everyone to stop that you'd had enough. You thanked me over and over like I was your hero, but the worst was yet to come. Jonathan, and I remember how badly you were gasping for air after I kicked you in the stomach then I knelt down and beat you in the face with my closed fist while others cheered me on. I can't remember whose idea it was to light the cigar, but as you laid balled up crying in pain, it only encouraged us to torture you more. I remember how we spread you out and pinned you down, then blew smoke in your face. But you knew what was coming, just as well as we all knew what we were about to do, and you tried in vain to break free as we burned your flesh, laughing and cheering all the while. When we finally let you up, you tried like hell to run, but a few of us weren't finished with you. And after we tackled you down and knocked your teeth out of your mouth, we took turns kicking you in the head and ribs. Somehow you found the strength to stand up when we finally allowed it. We can see your heart pounding, blood gushing out of your face, and we laughed even more when you slammed into the wall and fell down as you tried to flee out the door. And then, Jonathan, when you did make it outside, running and screaming for help down the street, we all threw rocks at you, laughed, and called you names. And less than a month later, I caught up with you yet again, and once more I victimized you. You were at a friend's house. You heard me call your name. I tried to run. You, you tried to run, but you knew that I'd catch you. So instead, you turned and tried to beg for mercy. But instead, I shot you in the face. You screamed as you bolted, not knowing exactly what happened, but the blood pouring out your face told you it was something bad. The car that saw you running and bleeding came to a screeching halt. They let you in. And just for kicks, I shot the car too. It was only after you got to the hospital emergency room that you found out that the bullet lodged in your face was a BB shot from a high powered BB gun. Jonathan, I'm currently in treatment program at Butner FCI one, and I chose to write this paper as part of my victim empathy assignment. I wanna take this time to apologize for my abusive behavior. You did not deserve to be mentally, emotionally, and physically abused by anyone. I also want to apologize to your family and future relations that you might have. I know that you may lack trust because of the abuse that I caused you. 
I am sorry for the scheme and embarrassment that I put you through. And I hope that one day you will heal from the damages I caused in your life. And I deeply apologize for taking your need, taking your needs for friendship and turning them into a living nightmare. Jonathan, to make amends, I promise that when released, I will stay away from you and enroll in a prevention program. One of the best amends, one of the best amends I feel that I can offer is how I will live being a man who helps stop violence and abuse and criminal activity of all kinds. I hope every time you look at the burns I put on your arms and the scars that I put on your face that you can forgive me. I truly am sorry, Jonathan, and wish you a happy life. Sincerely, Jeff Walker. Listen, um, there might be people that disagree with me for reading that right now. That's that's all real stuff, by the way. Um, and like I said, there are photos right here to prove it. Some of the stuff that um, they did to this poor guy. Um, I don't know if, can you guys see that? Well, that's that's not Jeff. That's one of his friends. I believe that's, I think, I think his name's Pino. I think he's doing life. And that's the Jonathan Powder kid after he's been abused. Here's another one where he's just, look at what they're doing. He's just bowing and they're beating him, laughing. And uh, there's another one. That's Jeff right there in the sink after they punched him. Look. Oh, Jeff Welker did, got out of prison and he got caught up in a case called um, Red, Red Swastika, I believe. It was out of Nebraska. It was out of um, Omaha. Uh, Fremont, Fre uh, Freeman, I forgot the name of the town, but he's actually uh, used to run around. He ran around Omaha. Um, the Jeff Welker I knew in prison was actually a really, really funny guy, really pleasure to be around. Uh, but he said himself that, you know, he could be a monster and told me a lot of other stuff that he would do, that he that he has done. I know he went back to prison, got another 15-year sentence, and I heard he had some issues when he was in prison. I'm not sure. But uh, that that this letter, I, I read it, and I was like, wow, man. Um, just, I, I actually knew a different case where... One of my cellies tortured somebody kind of in the same manner, burned him. Actually, they held him down and they they, they burned him with the coat hanger over nothing, over amusement, because it just got carried away. It went, went too far. Um, I hope this guy's doing good in his life now. I wanted to know that Jeff did feel bad about it, and he did, sincerely. Uh, so he wasn't laughing when he was telling me. He was more like, man, this is just what I did was insanity. Um, and he was high on meth when he did it. Anyway, apology from an inmate, Jeff Walker, to his victim, Jonathan, or Powder.